Hey, Railbirds, Kevin here. All right, we are coming at you from the 2023 Derby City Classic. We have round eight action for you. Tyler Steyer versus Mika Eminen. Both players have zero losses. So this should be a good match. They appear to be pretty well uh, evenly matched. Tyler Steyer from Wisconsin. Mika Eminen, originally from Finland, living, I believe, in uh, New York now. I'm not 100% sure on that. But I am being joined by Mark White. How you doing, Mark? Thanks for joining us today. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me once again. Looking forward to this one. Mika Eminen, you were right, actually. He is living in New York at the moment originally from finland as you rightly say tyler steyer from oshkosh i do i just love saying oshkosh <laughs> how can you not love saying that <laughs> <laughs> and it will be the man from oshkosh breaking off first rack looking forward to this here we go Oh, not a uh, not off to a very good start there. Scratched on the break. <clears throat> so let's uh, talk a little bit about the rules we're playing with at Derby City. Uh, we are breaking with the uh, we're racking with the nine ball on the spot. Uh, we're breaking from the break box. Uh, the two ball must not be racked at the back of the rack. You can rack it anywhere else in the rack, just not at the back. And but it must be a random rack, so no pattern racking and uh what else we got going on here oh yeah no jump cues so you are allowed to jump the ball but you must use your full playing cue not even your uh break cue i think that uh, is about it for the uh rules yeah so mika imminent first chance at the table ball in hand Ooh, it took Nicely a little bit of a the chance four. there, I think. Yeah, it was a clever little shot, that, though. He decided to take it on nice and early, break up the only possible awkward situation there. Worked out pretty nice. Yeah, straight into his stride. 50-year-old now. 50 years old. Wow. And what a career really? he's had, wow. me criminal. I would not have guessed that. He's looking good, in his, isn't he, the ice man? Yeah, I would have guessed he was much younger than that. Yeah, there's not a lot that this man hasn't won. Player of the decade. Moscone Cup MVP. He's won just about everything the sport's got to offer. Looks like he's off to a, a winning start here in this first rack. Got a very free-flowing kind of cue action, hasn't he, this guy? Bit, reminds me a little bit of Shane Van Boning in his queuing, to be honest. Yeah, I could see the, that similarity there. All right, well, he does take that first game, thanks to Tyler's uh, scratch on the break. one nothing in this race to nine. Yeah, and it's Rack Your Own using the Accurac there from Chris Renfro from Outsville. Best rack on the market, in my opinion. I was using one of them last night. Yeah, if you're going to use a template rack, uh, I, I think the AccuRack is the best one. Speaking of equipment that we're using here at Derby City, playing on nine-foot diamond tables with four and a quarter-inch pockets, Simonis cloth, Aramith balls, Master chalk. All right, here we go, Mika with the break. We've got both players breaking off at the same time. Very, very intimate setup here, shall we say? Yeah, Derby City, they are 
busting at the seams they have more players than they can handle if they could squeeze those tables even tighter together they would they're looking for ways to squeeze more tables in there anywhere they can but if they do that they're gonna have to make queues shorter <laughs> yeah some of these tables are, are already up kind of close to the walls Tyler Steyer, Moscone Cup player as well himself, of course. Moscone Cup winner as well. Yeah, I. that was the one year that I attended Moscone Cup. That was in Vegas, and Team USA did win. Tyler Steyer was on the team that year. You've got a good memory. Well, it's only one Moscone Cup to keep track of because, uh, you know, that was the... the no, I, I take that back. I've been the two Moscone Cups, so I don't have a good memory. I have a terrible memory. I forgot that I've been the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, Tyler I was also, took a chance there. Yeah, and, he did. And uh, didn't go right. Yeah, he might be able to swerve a little bit here to uh, to make this two ball, but he's looking at the kick. Yeah, he took a total chance there. Nothing was guaranteed opening up that 3-9. Oh, you could say a little unfortunate not to have a shot at the two. He's only a, an inch or so too far, but he is kicking it. Side rail. Maybe try and come behind it, send the two up. Well, he came off the other side of it thin. He hasn't scratched again, has he? Two visits, two scratches. Oh, that's not off to a very good beginning to his set here against the Iceman. Ball in hand for Mika. Wide open layout. Has Tyler Steyer got a, got a nickname? Hmm, good question. I'm not aware of one. It doesn't mean he doesn't have one. I'm, sh yeah. I'm sure his wife has one for him, but that's probably not his pool nickname. Yeah, nicely judged. A lot of players don't really like drawing off a ball in hand. They like going forward, but the reason you know it's it's very very difficult difficult to control the speed but he's got that one almost perfect i think having said that i think the six ball might be in the way slightly he'd love to just bounce off the side rail here yeah i think that six is going to be causing him to uh think a little bit extra long about his path to the four and he was able to avoid the six quite nicely yeah this is good Stun off the side route, back to more or less where he is now would be okay. Just like that. Nicely done. And he's a race to nine, so no need to panic just yet for Tyler. But he has had two visits and he's had two scratches. And Mika Imminent taking advantage of this. He's slightly wrong on this though. Just the wrong side of this six ball slightly. Might be able to just draw across. And you see the hesitation there, Kevin. He's just not quite right on this. Yeah, it's just uh, that, that little bit awkward angle. Yeah, which has now meant he's going away from the eight ball when he plays this seven so draw off the side rail back over really is good to watch me criminant when he's in full flow and this is perfect All 
All right, two ball in hands, two games to his side of the scoreboard. Two nothing, race to nine. I'm not sure whether you've been keeping up with the news and watching what's going on at the World Snooker Championships at the moment, but there was a protest the day before yesterday. Oh, what are the they protesting? Who, uh, yeah, I thought... Um, did you, have you not seen it, Kevin? I I live in a bubble here in the middle of nowhere. I don't know what's going on out, out there in the real world. <laughs> well, a guy actually ran onto the... jumped up on the table from the audience, opened up a bag of orange powder and threw it in the air and covered the table and himself in <laughs> orange powder. I think he was okay. having a, I think it was protesting at Emily Fraser using the purple five. <laughs> He wants the orange five. <laughs> well, that's perfectly understandable. So he's forgiven for that. Yeah, it was a, it was a, an oil <laughs> protester. Right. Quite bizarre, though. All right. Well, Mika has made ball on the break, but he has no look at this two ball. Is at control though can play what we call a push out for those of you new to the game can play the cue ball anywhere doesn't have to hit a rail can play any ball can make any ball and then when his opponent comes to the table he'll assess the situation if he doesn't like it he can put Mika back in so there you go he's going to give him a little bit of a look at this two ball Yeah, that's not a terrible push out. I don't think the two passes the eight. Playing safe is not super easy. Oh, did he leave not him a shot sure. in the two because he's lining up the three ball now or something? What's he what's he looking at? I don't know, but I don't think he's playing this. I think he's gonna thin off the two ball, come back down. I mean, this two doesn't go past the eight. That's impossible. So I can't see what he's looking at, to be honest. Perhaps he's playing it into the top left, is he? He That's might be. That's what it looked like. That's what it looked like. It looked like he was lining up the bank. He was. Just caught the eight, which... This might have been his plan the whole time. He might not have actually been playing it. Yeah, I don't mind that. So first little test for Mika. He's had ball in hand. His last previous two racks. But had that two ball not clipped that eight and had that two ball actually gone in the pocket, he would have been perfect on that three ball. Oh, look at this. Oh, well, he's left no shot at it, I don't think. And see it. Easy safety. Yeah, I hope Mika has his kicking shoes handy because he's going to need them. Tyler's only real singles title was the Kremlin Cup in Moscow some years ago now. 27 years old. Hasn't really had the the big titles that maybe was expected of him. And just indicating he wanted to bump that three out a little bit more. So should he get to the table again, he would have an easier run out. So he's trying to accomplish a few things there, trying to play safe and break open the balls. Yeah, Mika would love to come off this two ball thin. I was just wondering, might is there some little chance of it going off the eight in the corner? Or is he going one rail at it? Yeah, it's 
hard to tell from this camera angle if that's if that shot is there or not. Two rails. Well, he got a solid hit. Yeah. yeah, that was the problem though, wasn't it, Kevin? Not just yep. hitting it, he's left to... Uh... Well, Tyler won't be going for this because of where the three is, I don't think, so... But can get a decent safety in now, put a bit more pressure on Mika. Yeah, there's no way he goes for the cut on this because there's no reward if you make it. Tyler, sponsored by Predator and Jam Up, wearing his own range of clothing, actually. Jam Up Apparel. Mika from Mez. Not of course, a, not involved a terribly. In... Sorry, uh, Kevin. Go on. I'm sorry. Yeah, not a terribly uh, successful safety there. He's let Mika see this. He could even cut this in if he wanted, but I don't think he will be. I think he's going to be going for another safety here. Oh, yeah, I think he's left no a window. Reward. Now, can he bank this and hold for the three into the bottom left-hand corner, or is it just a safety? I think you can go for the bank on the two and bring the cue ball down here under the three, four. If you make the two, you can do something with the three. And if you don't make the two, you're safe, I think. No, he's going with your shot. He's trying to hold it and he's made it. And he has a shot on the three. Yeah, it's very, very well played. That was. And I think the four passes into the side. So he could just play a little draw shot here. Just a little, little cheeky little screw shot. <laughs> I've got a bit of trivia for you. I was just talking about me, Criminal, and being a Mez player. Another Mez player, of course, is Jeff DeLuna. Now, did you know Jeff DeLuna actually has a brother who plays Paul? Did you know that? I did not know that. Neither did I. They're playing a doubles match together today in the Philippines. Wow. Against Ignacio and Aranis. Just a little bit of information for you. Hmm. That looks like perfect speed. Nice, nice control. Yeah, it took the words right out of my mouth there. Nice control, exactly what that was. Beautifully played. It's got a lovely touch, Mika. And also Tyler. I've just noticed he's <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a pretty good cover up until you just outed yourself there. I'm too honest, you know that, Kevin. <laughs> right, looks like he's going to try to draw into this seven. Yeah, took another risk. Players don't usually like hitting balls when they don't have to. Took the risk. Tyler, of course, has been coached by the same guy who's done work with Fedor Gorst in the past a guy called Johan Reisink of course he's been your Moscone Cup captain hasn't he or coach at one stage uh, yeah wasn't he the uh, captain for uh, Team Europe as well he has been I think or coach I'm not sure he's been captain has he I know Alex Laley has of course Yeah, the USA won it, didn't they, with Johan? Yeah, we were sad to see him go. 
All right, Tyler on the scoreboard, 2-1, race to nine. So, if you guys are enjoying our coverage of the 2023 Derby City Classic, we'd appreciate it if you give us a little thumbs up. If you are so inclined to subscribe, it would be nice as well. And if you do, make sure you ring that bell so you get notified of all of our new Derby City content. Yeah, Mika, a previous winner of this event back in 2010. As I said, there's not a lot that the man from Finland hasn't won. So Tyler Stiat breaking off, looking to draw level. Oh, oh boy. Scratch. Well, that was unlucky, that one, to be honest, a little bit. Got kicked in, but it wasn't really well controlled. Cue ball flying around. Once again, Mika Imminent, ball in hand. And, well, how important is that? Because look at where the two ball. Is that the two ball by the seven, is it? Yeah. I believe that's the four ball by the seven. But you are right, that is definitely the key shot of this rack. Yeah. Well, he's got ball in hand, so... Hmm, I find it... his angle. I find it interesting that he's... Oh, oh that is a foul. Wow. <laughs> no, Mika, you don't get to put that three back. You hit it with the cue ball. That's a foul. Even in uh, even in cue ball fouls only, the key word is right there, cue ball fouls. You hit it with the cue ball. That's a foul. That cue ball is live. Yeah, I don't know. I've probably gone off to find a referee somewhere, but even I know that rule. <laughs> I'm surprised Mika doesn't. I think what he's saying is, should the three ball be put back? Well, that's up to Tyler, of course, and with ball in hand. No, well, if I've this never is, uh, seen that before. If this is ruled a foul, and I'm pretty sure it will be, then the three ball stays where it is. There will be no option to put it back. Okay, right. Well, I've never seen that in all of my years watching Paul. I don't think I've ever seen that before. You've watched Paul more than I have, Kevin. Have you ever seen it before? Never in a, uh, you know, any type of professional uh, event. I've never seen that. Uh, I'm trying to remember if I've ever even seen it, you know, from amateurs. Because they're usually pretty careful when they're, you know, moving that cue ball around. All right. Looks like they've come to a conclusion. Ball in hand for Tyler Steyer. Surprise, surprise. This four ball, though, still causing some trouble. It's really awkward, isn't it, in there, that four ball? Yeah, and uh, three ball in its new position kind of makes it a little bit more difficult. And, you know, when, when Mika had ball in hand, he was planning on bringing that cue ball all the way to that left side rail there, you know, bringing the cue ball between the seven, eight, which seems... I don't know. It seems like you could just play out, you know, middle of the table area, just, you know, a thin cut on the four. That seems seems more safe to me, but. Oh, don't tie up that seven. 
Oh, you, you know, think he's tied it up? I, I've, I've got to say, I don't agree with... You know, he'd he done that in the second rack where he was trying to move the 3-9 and he ended up hooking himself. And now he's gone and tied up. I'm not sure if it still goes in the top left, that seven ball, does it? Yeah, that's a good question. It doesn't look to me like it goes, but, you know, I've been fooled before by these camera angles. I think he's even looking at moving the 7 8 again. That's a good way to get By yourself hooked. By the way, he hooked. just placed his case. Yeah, I know. It's. Uh... Anyway, on goes the extension. Surely he's not going to draw into them again, is he? Nope. No. He thought better of it. Yeah, I think it does go in the top left-hand corner, this, if he gets on it correctly. Oh, he's lining up a breakout from this angle. Okay. He's certainly pushing the boat out today, isn't he, Tyler? <laughs> he's got a plan. He's sticking to it. That has worked out beautifully. That's a nice shot there, Tyler. Very a bit risky. Played. A bit risky, but the risk paid off. Looks like he even has a little bit of angle on the six to come out to the middle of the table. Move a stroke slightly. He has got a big stroke, Tyler. Uses the elbow drop. Quite con controversial, really. Whether he should be dropping the elbow or not. I guess he figures if it was good enough for Mike Siegel, it's good enough for him. Yeah, it's one of Johan Reisink's teachings as well. He's a big fan of the elbow drop is Johan. Oh, I didn't know that. I just know Mike Siegel has a very pronounced elbow drop when he's when he's shooting. I left on the cue ball there. Oaks in the cue ball down towards this straightforward nine and we're going to be level at 2-2. Two, two. All right, we are after four games. That's three ball in hands in four games. Don't usually see that many ball in hands. What round did you say we're in? We're we in are here, round Kevin? eight. Round eight, and neither player has a loss. So the very unique format here at the Derby City Classic. Yep, if you do lose, you get what's called a buyback, right? That's absolutely right. It's not a traditional double elimination tournament. It's uh, after every round, they uh, redraw every round. You get one buyback. If you, if you were to lose a match, you can rebuy one time. And every round, they shuffle up the names again and do a redraw every round. It's a mostly yeah, random draw. I say mostly random because they do make special allowance in their draw software. So you don't play the same person two times in a row. But other than that, it's a random draw every round. Oh, interesting. I just noticed there, Kevin, we're using the break box where the players are breaking from. That's between the first and the third diamonds on that end rail where Tyler is. 
Yep. And he was very, very close to that first diamond when he broke off there. Right on borderline. And of course, in the matchroom events, they use a different way of measuring the break box. Yep. And that wouldn't have been allowed in a matchroom break. Slightly inside. Also, I couldn't tell how far forward his cue ball was, but that just reminds me of another peculiarity of the Derby City, and that is, you know, the head string. <clears throat> On the break, the cue ball must be entirely behind the head string, so they go by the entire ball, not just the base of the ball. Normally, it's the base of the ball. As long as the base of the ball is behind the head string, then you're good. And people will, you know, put that cue ball right on the head string, just barely this side of it. Uh, but Derby City, the entire ball must be behind the head string. And in games such as One Pocket or Bank Pool, where you have ball in hand in the kitchen, to be able to shoot at a ball, that ball must be entirely out of the kitchen. So the ball must be entirely past the head string. So a little uh, ah. uniqueness for Derby City. Yeah, certainly is a very, very unique tournament, this one. It is one of a kind. And everyone, everyone's got to do it at least once. That and buffaloes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the one where you can climb on the table, right? That would, that would be the one. <laughs> Speaking of climbing on the table, I think Tyler's trying to uh, climb to a 3-2 lead here for the first time with the lead this set. Just digging down to play the nine into the same pocket. And there it is, 3-2. Takes the lead. Yeah, maybe. Mika now needs to just regroup he had that bizarre foul in the last rack where he had ball in hand and as he was trying to move and maneuver the cue ball around the table he sort of you know watching people when they're playing with gloves kevin i've always worried about players doing that when they're using the gloved hand to move the cue ball around you know oh good point that it can slip out, you know, it, because they're very slippery, aren't they, those gloves? That's exactly what their job is for. Yeah, they're slippery by design, yep. And using the, the gloved hand to move the cue ball around, it slipped out of his hand, contacted the three ball, and after some discussion was decided that it was a foul. And now Tyler, 3-2 up. Yep, just waiting for that player on the next table. There you see that cue ball right on the line of that first diamond. The break box in matchroom events normally is a line drawn from the first and third diamonds to the point of where that one ball is. So it's slightly smaller. Oh, and uh -huh. again. Yeah, and that did not get kicked in. That just went straight in. Same thing happened on his first break. Cue ball, one rail straight into that side pocket. And exactly what Mika needed, an easy starter. 
Think you'll be careful with that cue ball this time? <laughs> just going to say, he's still moving it around with that gloved hand. Use your sweaty hand, Mika. <laughs> there he goes. Thank you. Yeah, interesting that he's put the cue ball where he put it. I would think he would, uh, you know, put it more over there and go two rails towards the four. Yeah, he can just go two rails here, can't he? Hit the second rail coming in towards the four. That looks perfect. He can roll forward for the five in the side. He might be able to draw back for the five in the same corner as the four. I can't tell if he has angle to do that. Nope, just going forward for the five in the side. Whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> hey, don't look at me. I didn't do it. <laughs> he looked right into the camera when that happened. <laughs> Really has got a free-flowing action. Loves to use lots of spin. Kind of his trademark. Who can forget that amazing match he had against Chris Melling in the eight ball when Chris Melling did probably the greatest <laughs> clearance ever seen in an eight ball match. I love how afterwards they asked him, oh, you think you can do that again? Oh yeah, I can do that every time. Yep. <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. Something along those yeah. lines. I'm paraphrasing. Going to be level once again. Yep, all tied up again. 3-3, three, three, race to nine. So if I wanted to play in this Derby City, could I play in it, Kevin? It is open to anybody. Anybody and everybody, just come on down. And it's reasonably affordable by, you know... Big pool tournament standards. It's uh, hundred and sixty dollars to enter. The rebuy is a hundred dollars, and that's each of each event. There are three events. There's the nine ball, bank pool, and one pocket. Each event is a hundred and sixty dollars. You can play yeah, in I one. You can I'll... play in two. You can play in all three. Well, I'm not very good at one pocket. I don't mind banks, but I'm not good enough to play banks. I'm barely good enough to play nine ball, but I'd have a go at it just to say that I'd played in it. Says the person who's been winning tournaments left and right over there where you're staying. <laughs> yeah, the opposition maybe not quite as tough as we're watching here, though. <laughs> All right, is this going to give him a shot in the one? No, it is not. Gonna see a push out here. Where does he push to? Somewhere in this bottom left hand corner, maybe, or over to that side rail. Here his down hand is the... there, give him a look at the edge. Yeah, down near the bottom left, that's the first thing that came to my mind. That doesn't mean it's the best though. If you were to if you were to push to this bottom left, it seems like it'd be probably be a pretty easy return safe. You know, they could thin off the left side of the one ball, bring the cue ball back underneath this wall of balls. Yeah, in the end played the shot a bit quickly for me and uh really play a good shot. But he's got away with it to a certain extent. 
Can he play this to the top left? Yeah, he's awfully close to his work. I think he's going to have to drift between that 2-6 with the cue ball, so I don't think he can hold it up to the right side of the two. Oh, this looks like he's just, just playing safe. safe. Yep. Yeah. Huh? Just and he's made got a there. rail. Twice he made a rail, of course. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just to point out what we're talking about, a, a ball must strike a cushion after you have made contact with the lowest ball on, either that or one must go in a pocket. Well, the good news is he didn't give up ball in hand. The bad news is he's left a pretty makeable shot here for Tyler to get started with, with what should be pretty easy position on the two. Yeah, Mika showing a bit of frustration there. He's known as the Iceman. Not necessarily the... Uh, the greatest nickname the player's ever had. Yeah, he doesn't always give off the persona of the calm, cool, and collected. He does let his temper show every once in a while. I'd like to see a bit of emotion, though, a bit of passion. There's that big stroke, but a nice, uh, nice stun on that ball. Neither player at the moment in full stride. A little no, bit. The, they've patchy. both been struggling a bit. Is he looking at playing a, a little billiard onto the four here? No. Well, one thing's for certain, Kevin. He hasn't been afraid to play into balls in this match so far, has he? He's played a few little cannons here and there. Exactly right. I do find it a little bit curious that he chose to play for this 4-7. It looked to me like he could play the 4 in the same pocket as the 3, but, you know, like I said, you know, these angles on camera can be deceiving. I think we need to invest in some of them cameras that aren't deceiving. That's what we need. Well, sign me up for a few of those. They sound <laughs> expensive, though. They're very expensive. So expensive, they haven't even made them yet because they know no one can afford to buy them. Nicely done. Nice little stop shot here. Hold for the six. 
Once again, Tyler could be taking the lead. Yeah, we have quite the back and forth battle going on here. I really do enjoy watching Tyler's view action. When I'm at the events in person, I often go and watch him practice. Yeah, very when smooth. he's practicing, yeah, when he's practicing, quite a little crowd gathers, you know, to watch him practice. And he's having fun with the crowd and asking them what shots they want him to play. He's really quite entertaining when he's having a bit of a warm up. But once the match starts, it's all business. Yeah, I was, I was going to add to that, you know. I just wish that he could relax a little bit more. He does get very, very tense and the, the cheeks start to redden up a little bit during matches, you know, and he gets very, very intense. I know he's a big fan of a, a book called Relentless and he kind of lives his life by this. It's, it's like his Bible. Very, very strict regime he has of going to the gym, eating at certain times, walking at certain times, practicing at certain times, really has got this kind of, you know, regimental kind of attitude to his daily routine. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, nine on the break. There it is. That counts. Five, three. Yeah, you might have heard Tyler mention earlier on one of Paul's silly rules. I've got to admit, I think the nine on the break is one of Paul's silly rules. I'm really not a fan of that, to be honest, but it's part of the attraction, I guess. That's nine ball. That's part of what makes nine ball fun. All right, Tyler, rem rem remember how you broke those. Yeah, he's scratched twice, hasn't he, so far? Actually, it might even be three times, isn't it? Twice in the side and one in the corner. So it's three yeah. times. Yep, that's right. Oh, that nine ball is moving again. It looks like there is a path to the corner if he wants to attempt it. Nice little safety though here behind the eight. I'm surprised he played that quite so hard to be honest. Thought he might have chosen just to leave that one somewhere in the region of the nine ball so that if Mika does give ball in hand Tyler would have had a shot at the 1-9 either by maybe Karam wanted, or Combo maybe he wanted to make absolutely sure he got a rail with the 1 wouldn't want to come up short and then give Mika ball in hand on the 1-9 yeah fair point He's looking to go three rails here, I think. I think you're right. Just past the side pocket. He was looking to see if he can get there. And then this bottom rail, side rail. And either get a kick and stick behind the seven or even make the, t the one in the side. What about that for a chance? Could even make the one seven combo up in the corner. Oh. Uh, Oh, leave it alone, Mika. <laughs> oh, is he going to tie it up? 
Well, that's what he was hoping for, wasn't it? But I think he's going to be in trouble again here. Now, are we playing three foul? I think we are, aren't we? Yep, we are definitely playing three foul rule. The one hasn't got a pocket. You don't often see that, do you? No, ball in hand and the ball is out in the middle of the table and you still don't have a pocket for it. He's looking at that 1-7 now that you just mentioned. If he chooses to shoot a stop shot here for the three on the side, he's going to be close to his work. Yeah, I think he was looking at can he play it off the five, I think. Or maybe not. Maybe draw past the three, play the three into the same pocket. Oh, he could hold it, no problem. What are we worrying about? <laughs> He's got a two rack lead. This could be three. He's in good position, and if he does take that three-game lead, that will be the biggest lead of this set so far. He just needs to cue this one in nicely. Get that nice, smooth action going. Beautifully played. Needs it to run, though. Oh, he's a little bit short. Oh, this rack not over yet. Yeah, this eight is missable. I've seen people miss this. Yeah, especially on the side pockets on these diamonds. They're not easy. If you miss it, you're going to leave it. No problem. Handles it. No issues. Yeah, might have seen just a little tap of the chalk on the table there. He knew how important that eight ball was. Those. There we go. Six, three. Race to nine. Yeah, and take into consideration, Kevin, that three of his breaks he's scratched off of. Yeah, that's doing something. Uh, break on three of your know, scratch on three of your breaks and still be have a six, three lead against Mika. He's also had a golden break, which helped, of course. Always welcome. Unless it's your opponent. I remember watching a Mac match with uh, Earl Strickland, and I can't remember who he was playing against, but it was at the Turning Stone, I believe. Mm -hmm. And both players, him and his opponent, they were racking for each other. And there were four golden breaks in a row at the Turning Stone two years ago. Uh, they must have been using, you know, the triangle rack and not a template rack. Yeah, they were. 
but they were racking for each other. I thought it was quite funny, to be honest. Oh, make that. <laughs> oh, and four there's another scratches. scratch. Well, he's only got two pockets left to scratch in. <laughs> yeah, I think he was just saying, I've done that one, I've done that one, I've done that one, and I've done that one. Just can't keep that ball out of the pocket on the break. It really is struggling. Well, if he gets to break again, I suggest uh, maybe not going with the cut break. Maybe just uh, go for the hit him square break and control the cue ball. Yeah, he's had very, very limited success on the break today. And did you notice once again there, Mika using his right hand <laughs> pick up and maneuver the cue ball around the table after that? Bizarre foul in an earlier rack where he picked up the cue ball, was putting it in position, let go of it and hit the three with it. And then turned to uh, Tyler and says, hey, do you want to put that back or leave it there? And was he was just going to keep shooting. <laughs> Tyler says, uh, that's a foul. <laughs> yeah, Mika walking off with the cue ball into the distance, wasn't he? It was like when I was younger, we used to play soccer. And if we didn't like the way it was going, we used to pick up the ball and say, <laughs> I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> All right, Mika putting that nine ball in its home to get one back. Six four, race the nine. And yeah, once again, it was the scratch from Tyler. He struggled with the break in this match so far. Three of Mika's four games. We're from Mika running out with ball in hand from Tyler's break, from Tyler's scratch on the break. I think. Yes, I believe that's right. Yes, correct, yeah. And the other time he had ball in hand, he, of course, he gave it back because of that three ball incident. Super Billiard Expo has just taken place. Mika Imminent won the seniors event. What? He's not old enough to play in a seniors event. What are you talking about? <laughs> wow, look. Wow, I just... I think we need to uh, get these players some hydrocortisone cream or some, uh, some Benadryl or something with all this scratching. <laughs> the bizarre breaking from both players so scratches just shows you nine on the spot and a break box really does mix it up and I do like that I've got to be honest I think it's done wonders for nine ball Instead of the repetitive wing ball going in, cue ball in the same position every time. I agree. Add a little randomness back into the game. Yeah, and I know in America you used to rack the two at the back always as well and I was never a fan of that to be honest either because players got very wise to it controlling the one two and the wing ball and it was pretty predictable what was going to happen next yep but I'm a big fan of nine ball now I must admit 
Those little tweaks have worked. And of course, the other thing that the break box does, it, you tend to get more clusters as well, rather than balls in the open. You, you get to see a little bit of everything, a bit of safety, a bit of kicking, jumping. Not so much jumping in this event, though, because of the no jump cue rule. And jump with your full length playing cue, though. Yeah, I haven't seen hardly any jumps. Oh, There's been Tyler's. there have been a few people that were brave enough to take it on. I've even seen uh, someone, you know, jump a full ball with their with their full cue. But those are pretty rare in this event. Nice angle on this five ball. Does he come between the seven and nine? Does he go into the seven? Does he come past the seven? Options. Well, I don't agree with that shot one little bit. I mean, he's tried to nick a bit of the pocket there and just roll it through the gap. And I, that didn't look on, to be honest. I thought the natural angle was going to take him into the seven ball, to be honest. But, well. Oh, don't get behind that oh, seven. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, that's a dreadful shot. Yeah, that was... Uh... That was a bit careless. You didn't need to bring the cue. I'm happy with that. Yeah, you didn't need to bring the cue ball all the way to that second rail and back out. He could have shot that much softer and not gone anywhere near that seven ball. It's kind of a a byproduct of the big swing that he uses as well, Kevin. That is, it's on those little touch shots that it's hard, you know, with that big flowing backswing to mm -hmm. then control the the pace the feel of the shot so two rails good hit is he gonna get a safe out of it no he is not i can sense his frustration all the way from over here The only saving grace is he hasn't left the perfect angle for Tyler. He's going to have to use a rail. He's going to have to go forward and leave a longer seven. Very important game this one now. And if Tyler can steal it back, that will be huge. After Absolutely. Tyler missed that five ball. 7 4 versus 6 5 in race to nine. Absolutely. Yeah, and this will hurt Mika as well. If you don't get a chance in the rack, well, fair enough. But if you've actually had a chance, they're the ones that can mess with the mind. Yep, the games we let slip away are the ones that haunt us. view of the long slow back swing a slight pause and then the smooth push, push through of the cue I nearly said that seven four race to nine I am Kevin Ross 
being joined by Mark White. This is round eight action. Tyler Steyer versus Mika Eminen. Neither player has a loss. And it looks like players are going to take a quick break, so we'll be right back. All right, players are back from break. Looks like Billy Thorpe on that table on the upper left of the screen. Oh, and they're done. <laughs> they just shook hands. Yeah, I wonder if Billy will make Moscone Cup again. I hope so. I'm rooting yeah, for him. I, I want admit, Billy on our team. Uh, yeah, I think he's kind of like your Jason Shaw. Absolutely. You know, he's got that, got that fire in his belly and he gets the team upbeat and get some excited you know great doubles partner of sky woodward as well and he's very supportive of the rest of the team too when the other teammates are out there uh, playing he's right there uh, giving them his giving them his support great team player yeah he's passion personified isn't he passion patriotism Oh. It's okay this time. Managed to keep the cue ball on the playing surface. And this to go on the hill, this one, and look at where they've finished. Most difficult ball is the first one. Yeah, I don't even know if he can, or even, I don't even know if he wants to cut this to the side. He may have to shoot this in the corner with a little bit of draw and then. Shoot a 3-9 combo next. No, he's going to go to the side. It's a very thin cut. Cue ball going to go up and down table. Maybe it's not as thin as it looks on camera. Maybe I'm seeing it wrong. But it looks super thin to me. Yeah, the way he was just pointing his cue up this bottom rail. Whooped be a lot thicker than the angle I'm seeing yeah it looked like that he thinks he can just shoot us in the side a little bit of draw and like come at the three you know off the bottom rail scratch looks on to me All right, well let's see what he does If he can negotiate this two ball and get on the three, could get him on the hill. Yeah, big shot here. Important shot. He seems to have made up his mind. Well, he's going high on the cue ball, so we're definitely seeing it different from this angle. He ended up playing safe. Wow. That was a heck of a shot. Yeah, I mean, he had to get the cue ball absolutely perfect because look where the two balls finished. And don't put it past Mika to make this two in the side. And if he does, he'll have a shot on the three. Oh, good effort. So close. Yeah, I was just waiting for that. Frustration for Mika again. amount of titles that Mika has won though and the way he dominated it's hard to criticize him for anything really he got his way of playing and it's worked for him in the past I think as you get older 
it just becomes a little bit more frustrating because you're never the player again that you were back when you were young. That's just, you know, highly unlikely that you're ever going to reach those heights again. But, yep. you know, the mind still wants to. Well, he's over here, this, is he? No, he's okay. Looks pretty good to me. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'd like to say congratulations as well to Elise Kiu, girlfriend of Alex Montpellier, another good player from France. Elise has just won the ladies bar box event at Super Billiard Expo as well. Ah, oh, congratulations. On the hill. 8-4. Now if you can just keep that cue ball out of the drink when he breaks, he's, he's got a chance. Yeah, there you see. The Fargo rates at the bottom and the percentages. Prediction for winning. Huge favourite, of course, being on the hill now, Tyler Steyer. Mika Riminen started out as just slight favourite. With the higher Fargo rate. And take oh. into consideration the scratches that Tyler's had on the break, the golden break he's had. You know, Fargo rate has uh, Tyler at about a, what is that, about a 25 to 1 here at, you know, 4%. Is that about 25 to 1? I would, uh, I would take Mika if someone was giving me 25 to 1. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd put a couple dollars on Mika. Yeah, I would as well. It's not over yet. Cue ball. It's okay. What Fargo Rate doesn't know, Fargo Rate doesn't know that uh, Tyler's scratched on the break four times this set. A little bit of frustration for Tyler here as well. I think he's a little bit annoyed not to have better shot of this two ball, but he has got the opportunity to play a safety off it. Yeah, you're at the table. In control of the table. You're at the table, and you can see the two ball. That's those are all positives. I think he's got him. I don't think he has a window. Both players still with buyback opportunity, so it won't be over for either of these players. They can pay another $100 and have another chance. You'd rather be going through on the winner's side, especially in a field this big. Absolutely. All right, good hit there by Mika, but that's going to leave a nice shot for Tyler to get started with. And you've got to say, it's this two to the three. The only stumbling block, everything else nicely in the center of the table. Yes, this is definitely the key shot here. Maybe with high right. Just persuade the cube. Oh, and he's missed it. Oh, he's missed it by a long way. Now, similar chance for Mika. Mika's still alive.
No. If these were the standard four and a half inch pockets on diamonds, that would have dropped. But we're playing on the extra tight four and a quarter inch pockets. Yeah, and I'm glad we are because you know that was never in really, and it, you know even on a four and a half inch pocket, I mean that okay, I think it would have dropped as you say, but it should never have dropped being that far. You know, it was a long way off the rail as it was coming down. It never looked tin, did it? That two ball. And I'm kind of glad we're playing on the four and a quarter. Lots Think of mostly. arguments for using the four inch pocket as well. Maybe it's just a fraction too tight. Maybe four and an eighth is optimum. What would you say, Kevin? I mean, not for your play, of course, but for pros. I would not want to see him go any tighter than the four and a quarter. Uh, if you, you know, four inch pockets, you know, I don't, I don't want to watch people rattle balls, you know, all day long. I want to watch people run balls. And also the players get afraid to shoot at the pocket. You know, they they play safe where normally they would be shooting and you're wondering why did he just play safe there? Why didn't he shoot that ball in? You know, it's, I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't want to go any tighter, but that's just me. No, no. I, I kind of think four, four and a quarter is about right in my eyes. I know they use four inch for the Masters, but that's a, you know, that's a different tournament altogether. It's top sixteen, I think it is, or twenty four, mm -hmm. isn't it? Something like that. So that's a standalone event, kind of like. The golf masters, you know, at Augusta, well known for being very, very difficult, that course. So I kind of like that idea for for one of the tournaments a year, just to get the true master. Yeah. yeah and if it's uh, invitational, if it's the best of the best, sure, no problem. Uh, but just as a, you know, like an everyday type thing, you know, where, you know, you have 500 people in a tournament shooting on four inch pockets, that's probably not a good idea. Yeah, so I think we decided four and a quarter <laughs> is just about right for everybody, for fans, for players. All right, we've decided. Just the pool world just needs to make it happen now. We have spoken. Well, this could be it. It could be all over. And I must admit, slightly flattering scoreline for Tyler Steyer. It's been closer than the 8-4 scoreline does suggest. Yeah, the way the way this match was going, the way both players were struggling, it could just as easily have been 8-4 the other way. Yeah, just little things here and there have changed this match. So this nine ball then. Oh, the Steyer will be through to round nine. Mika will be getting another $100 out of his wallet and going up to the tournament desk and saying, I want a rebuy, please. There it is. Tyler Steyer defeating Mika Eminem 9-4. As you said, Mika does have a rebuy available, and I'm sure he's probably already reaching in his wallet to get it. Uh, so anyway, thank you guys for watching. I am Kevin Ross along with Mark White. Uh, be sure to uh, check out our channel. We have plenty more action from the 2023 Derby City Classic. Nine ball, one pocket, and we'll have some bank pool coming up too. So be sure you're subscribed. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. See you guys.